Welcome everyone to this edition of the Wayback Tech. This video is going to start the construction of the Pentium Pro project. So stay tuned everyone. So here's the heart of the Pentium Pro Beast. This is an Intel PR440FX motherboard. Um, this does not have the SCSI option installed on it. Um, I purchased this on eBay and just got this in. Um, it has two 180 megahertz uh, Pentium Pro processors under those big cooling fans. Um, and uh, this is actually a very clean motherboard. I'm very surprised how clean this is. The uh, individual that sold this uh, must have cleaned it up or took very good care of this one way or the other. Um, the fans look practically brand new. There's no dust on them. Um, so they were either very well cleaned up or just they were brand new, one of the two. Um, I'm going to be getting uh, a couple of the Blacktop Pentium Pro chips, the 1 megahertz cache chips, and I want to test those and see um, how those perform compared to the 180-256K uh, chips. Um, I'm probably not going to get the 200 maker 512k chips because these price, prices on these uh, Pentium Pros are a little pricey right now. Um, and that's something I would recommend that uh, if anybody's thinking about uh, doing a Pentium Pro system, uh, you might want to buy the components now or sooner rather than later because uh, they are going up and they are starting to get harder to find as a lot of people are taking these and using them for uh, gold scrapping. Um, and they're becoming harder to find. Interestingly enough, uh, when I was looking at this motherboard, uh, I uh, found that uh, th I get this motherboard on eBay brand new uh, for $75. Um, and I found a source of brand new Pentium Pro processors that were $50 a piece, brand new, unopened in box, still cellophane wrapped. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, when I was pricing all this stuff out, though, I was getting around the $200 mark, and I was like, eh, you know what? <laughs> That's just a little more than I really want to spend on it. So, with a little vigilance and, and, and you know, searching and stuff like that, I found this board, and he listed it. It's a good price. Um, also came with a 250 gig drive, uh, DVD, RW, uh, floppy drive, and um, some uh, RAM with this uh, EDO. 168 pins, only 128 meg RAM, unfortunately. Um, I do want to upgrade this to one gigabyte of RAM. Um, that's going to be for later. Right now I just want to uh, test this board and get it up and running and make sure everything works okay. Um, so I think this is going to be a great uh, test platform for the Pentium Pro project. So let's get started on this beast. Okay, so I got the old motherboard stripped out of this and it's interesting to note this p uh, panel that removes from the case that holds the motherboard is shaped exactly like the motherboard. So that tells me that this case was obviously designed to hold the Pentium Pro motherboard that we're going to be installing in this. So a couple things I noticed, I'm going to have to put some uh, risers in here in a couple places. Um, the rest of them are in the correct place so those will work. And I do not have a back uh, cover for the, for the slots back here so uh, unfortunately I'm just going to leave that open for now. So I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, risers put in here. And then we're going to need, looks like we need another one up here. It's always a good idea to get all your risers in where you need them because uh, that's pressure points and right here is where the memory is going to go. So um, even though I'm going to put the memory in, before I put the board in, uh, it's still a good idea to have that all in there so we don't flex the board, crack the board, things like that. I'm just going to test fit this bad boy in here. And looks like we're good. Everything fits in there real nice. Get our voltage regulator in here. Okay, now we're ready to put this board onto the chassis.
we go. Very nice, very nice. The card I'm going to use for this right now is going to be the uh, Voodoo 3 2000 PCI card. One place that I am going to uh, modernize a little bit though is in the sound card. Uh, I prefer using uh, Sound Blaster Lives or Oddities for these older systems if I can. Um, you can get the Sound Blaster Live and Live 5.1 on eBay for very, very cheap. I've seen them for five to ten bucks a card. Um, so that's that's pretty good. And you know what? They're still good sound cards. Um, they have great sound quality. And for these older games uh, that this is going to run, um, they're perfect. So, in fact, I just saw a five pack of them on eBay for uh, forty bucks, <clears throat> or it might have even been thirty bucks. It was awfully cheap. I know that. Okay, so the other thing I need to put in this, I need to put a network card in this. So I want to put this nice little Linksys uh, LNE 100TX card. Um, this again is maybe a little bit newer than what have come with this computer, but uh, I have drivers for this, so <laughs> that's why we're going to use this. So I'm gonna, this guy's going to live right here for now. Boy, these PCI slots feel like they've never had anything in them. There we go. I guess that was a virgin PCI slot there, folks. So one thing I like about this case, um, you know, this case style was pretty popular back in the 90s, and uh, it's kind of cool. It had this removable uh, motherboard uh, board right here. Removable motherboard tray, I should say. And... Uh, that was pretty. That was something pretty cool back in the day. Um, I never really cared for the mounting of the power supply, which lives, you know, up here by the, right over the processors. But uh, that's okay. There's gonna be plenty of pr plenty of clearance, um, in here for the power supply. But uh, as far as airflow goes, it's gonna be plenty. So, <clears throat> one modification I might try on this is, um, while I think these heat sinks and coolers. Are probably adequate. Um, I'd like to see if I can upgrade these just for shits and giggles. And um, I'm thinking maybe I can modify some uh, um, AM2, AM3 socket uh, heat sinks to fit this because it's pretty close. I've already tested one. The clip's a little bit off, but I think with some creative bending of the clip, uh, I think it will snap on there just fine. All right, so I'm going to slide this back in the case, and we will be back. Well, here's where we are right now. I've got the motherboard back in the case. Got my cards in. There's nothing like seeing a motherboard actually take up the entire tray inside of the case. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Zoom in on this here a little bit and I'll show you guys how this looks. Very nice. I still got to plug a few things up. One thing I ran into a problem with is that uh, if you notice, I didn't pay much attention to this. I've only got four PCI slots on this motherboard. Intel obviously uh, <laughs> didn't think you'd need more than four ports. Uh, I wanted to put a SCSI card in this. Um, apparently, it looks like I'm not going to be able to run dual Voodoo's even if I wanted to, even if I wasn't going to run SCSI because I need. I don't need a network card. Uh, I'd like to have one. No, I'm not planning on getting on the internet with this thing, but uh, uh, I'd like to be able to access my network just so I can get some files off and things like that. Um, I could do a USB dongle, but then again, the USB on this computer is only 1.0, which means 11 megabit, and that's not going to be terribly fast, but if I have to do that, I probably will. Um, I have a... 
two gigabyte iOmega SCSI drive here that I want to put in there. And I've got some, unfortunately they're one gigabyte disks, but uh, they'll work fine for this. Someone gave this to me a couple years ago and I uh, decided, you know what? I think I'm going to use this guy. That's pretty cool. One thing I always wanted to do is I wanted to see if I could uh, format this and partition this uh, to boot off uh, different ver uh, versions of Windows uh, by swapping out the cartridge. And uh, other than Windows 2000, uh, one gigabyte discs should be plenty for 95, 98 um, OS tests. So that should be kind of interesting to try and see if I can make that work. Um, but anyway, one thing I want to point out too uh, in this case, and a lot of people might run into this problem. Um, well, it's not really a problem, but um, one thing I'd say is that take off the front and clean the case and clean it while you've got the uh, motherboard tray out or whatever you've got. If you got the case tore apart, clean out the case. Because now is a good time as any to get some Windex, some paper towels, make that baby shine like it's brand new. Um, get up here, show you. This is the uh, DVD drive that was sent to me with this motherboard. Um, I may not use this uh, too long in this computer, but uh, for now it's going to be great. Um, that's another thing uh, to uh, these old CD-ROMs back in the day sucked. Um, if if uh, <clears throat> you try to burn a disc or something like that, a lot of times they wouldn't read the disc. So um, I still have that problem today, as a matter of fact, trying to use old drives uh, with burned discs. Um, so you know you can get IDE drives for 18 bucks. Get them off eBay, DVD drives, things like that pretty cheap so here is a shot down the case got my cabling on here put a, a Y splitter for the uh, fan connector just to kind of clean that up a little bit as you can see I've got more than adequate space between the uh, power supply and the uh, processor coolers there and I think this is looking pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, install the uh, jazz drive here Okay, so I'm going to get the rest of the connectors plugged up on this, and we will be back, and we will have this thing booted, folks. Or at least I'm hoping so. Cross our fingers. So here we have the completed uh, Pentium Pro system, and I found a nice cover to put in here for now. Um, it's all ready to be fired up. I got it plugged in, powered up, so let's see if it turns on. The moment of truth, folks. I'm excited. Hopefully it doesn't go up in a big old poof of smoke. So let's find out. And we are booting, folks. Nineteen ninety two AMI BIOS. Looks like the RAID card's working. Looks like I found the jazz. It looks like there's something already on this hard drive. And there we go.